Yeah. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you husky. Gold, gold discovered in a Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. On your mark, get set... Fellas and girls, running foot races or playing baseball or any sport calls for a hearty breakfast. Tomorrow, make yours a breakfast of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish extra health benefits of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. What's more, these ready-to-serve king-size kernels of premium wheat or rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. They're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. They're delicious. Yes, try them. You'll say, here's the breakfast we like to eat, Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Pete Frazier's father had died in the Yukon as poor as the day when he had first arrived in the territory to search for gold. But the older man's failure had not deterred Pete from succumbing to the same lure that had drawn his father northward during the stampede of 98. In the spring of the following year, Pete sailed from Seattle with his pretty wife, Karen. Although they too failed to strike it rich, Pete did stake out a small claim on Dutchman's Creek which provided the young couple with a modest living. A few weeks after they had settled down in their isolated cabin, Pete and Karen were awakened one night by an ominous pounding on the door. Pete? Pete, are you awake? I sure am. Only a dead man could sleep through all that racket they're making. (laughs) Who on earth can it be at this hour? Whoever it is, he sure is an impatient cuss. At least you could give me time to get some clothes on. Maybe I'd better get up, too, and put on my robe. Yeah, maybe so. I'm coming. Take it easy. Hey. Put up your hands. Yeah, and don't try slamming the door in our faces. What do you two want? You'll find out, Fraser. Come on, Doc. We'd better go inside. Okay, Jake, but keep your gun on him. Who is it? Hey, Doc, you must be robbers. Guess again, sister. While you're at it, you better put your hands up, too. That's better. Now come over here where we can keep an eye on you. If you aren't robbers, then who are you? Sorry, Fraser, but we ain't got time for any formal introductions. Hurry up and get the rest of your clothes on. What's the idea? We're taking you along with us. What do you want with me? Shut up the questions and do what I tell you. All right. Where are you going to take my husband? (laughs) You can ask him when he gets back. Yeah, if he gets back, that is. You're not going to hurt him. Well, that depends. On what? Well, if he cooperates, he'll be okay. If he don't cooperate, then we may have to get a little rough. All right, I'm ready. Now what? Tie his hands back of him, Dolph. Use that rawhide hanging up on the wall. Good idea. Turn around, Fraser. All right. Hey, don't tie the rawhide so tight. You'll cut his wrist. I can tie him a lot tighter than this, sister. There. I guess that'll hold him. What about the dame, Jake? Should we tie her up, too? Keep your hands off my wife. Ah, shut up, Fraser. Well, let her alone, Dal. It's a full day's hike from here to the nearest town. By the time she can go get help, we'll be miles from here. <laughs> I guess you're right at that. All right, Fraser. No, uh, Shut no. up, you. Stay where you are. Now, get moving, Fraser. Right out the door. Three horses? Yeah. We brought one just special for you. 
Help him up in the saddle, Dal. Steady, boy. Up you go, Fraser. Come on up. Let's get out of here. Steady, boy. Get up. Get up. Sergeant Preston had left Selkirk several days earlier on a two-week patrol of the Pelly River District. On the morning after the kidnapping of Pete Fraser, he was riding along the river trail with King romping beside his horse. Great dog barked the sight of a young woman approaching on foot. Yes, I see her too, King. Looks as if she's walked quite a distance. Get up, Lucky. Come on now. Oh, but a who? Did he? Oh, thank heaven I found someone. And a Mountie, too. I thought I had to go all the way into town to get help. I'm Sergeant Preston, ma'am. I'm Karen Frazier. Well, here, let me give you a drink from my canteen. Oh, thank you. Oh, I, I feel better already. You said you were on your way to get help. What's wrong? Last night, my husband was kidnapped. Kidnapped? Yes, by two men. They came and woke us up last night while we were asleep. They held a gun on Pete and made him go with them. Any idea who they were? Why they did it? None at all, Sergeant. They were complete strangers. Where is your cabin? On Dutchman's Creek. My husband has a small claim there. I'll go there as fast as we can so my dog can pick up their trail. Easy, boy. All right, Mrs. Fraser. I guess Blackie can carry the two of us. Get up, Blackie. Come on now. Meanwhile, the two crooks, Jake and Dolph, with their prisoner, Pete Fraser, had arrived at the cave in the hill. Oh, 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 steady, boy. Hey. Easy there. Now climb down off that horse, Fraser. I will if you'll hold him steady. All right, steady, boy. Now get moving. Into the cave. Yeah, there's a friend of yours in there. So you brought him back with you, huh? Matt Jessup. <laughs> he recognizes you, Jessup. Oh, I ought to. Known for years back in the States. He came up here with Dad during the gold rush. <laughs> I guess Jessup and your dad were pretty good pals. Isn't that right, Jessup? <laughs> good enough. What's the idea of having these two thugs kidnap me this way? I've got something here I want you to read for us. Something to read for you? Yeah, right here. Just a piece of paper with a lot of numbers in it. Those numbers mean something, Pete. What are you talking about? That paper is written in code. Those numbers are words or letters or something. Well, maybe so, but they don't mean anything to me. Don't lie. You savvy what they mean. Now hurry up and tell us what it says. You're crazy, Jessup. How should I know what it says? Now look, Pete. I was with your dad when he died. He gave me that code message and asked me to send it to you. You've got the code to decipher the message with. I've got nothing of the sort. So you're going to play dumb, huh? All right. Take a look at this letter. Where'd this come from? Your dad gave it to me along with the code message. Go ahead and read it. Oh. Dear Pete, I'm sorry that I have nothing of value to leave you. The enclosed message should more than make up for the lack. You will be able to read the message because I've sent you the code. But I feel sure no one else will be able to decipher it. Goodbye and... God bless you, son. That's how we know you've got the code. Now, do you still claim you can't decipher that message? Yes, I do. Dad sent me any code. I never received it. What's more, even if I had, I wouldn't decipher that message for you, Jessup. Hmm. Looks like we'll have to apply a little persuasion. Jake and Dolph are a couple of pretty rough boys, Pete. Are you sure you won't read us that message? You heard what I said. You're making a big mistake, Pete. Don't worry, boss. Jake and me will make him talk, won't we, Jake? We sure will, Dolph. We sure will. <laughs> this your cabin, Mrs. Fraser? Yes, this is it, Sergeant. Oh, no. Oh, hang on for a second. I'll lift you down. There you are. Thank you. I'll put King on the scent right away. Can he really trail those crooks? He's the best tracker on the force. They mounted their horses right about here. And then they rode off in that direction, toward the hills. So I see from the hoof marks. Have you any item of clothing that your husband wore recently? Yes, I guess so. Why? By sniffing a piece of clothing, King will be able to separate your husband's scent from that of the crooks. Oh, I'll go get something right away. All right. <laughs> How about it, fellow? You got the scent? Steady, boy, steady. You'll have to wait just a minute till Mrs. Fraser gets back, and then we'll hit the trail. Here's a shirt of Pete's, Sergeant. Will that do? Oh, that'll do nicely, Mrs. Fraser. Here, boy, sniff this. 
the man you've got to find, King. The cooks took him away. I believe he understands every word you I say. I think he's got the general idea. Steady, Blackie. <laughs> Bye, Mrs. Fraser. Goodbye, Sergeant. Come Blackie. Get up there. With Matt Jessup standing by to watch the proceedings, the other two crooks had given Pete Fraser a severe going over. But their worst efforts had failed to break down his grim refusal to talk. Finally, the crook named Jake paused in disgust and remarked, Well, I'll be doggone. You sure are a stubborn cuss, Fraser. Should we work on him some more, Jessup? What about it, Pete? Are you ready to talk yet? I've already told you, Jessup. I haven't got the code to translate that message. Come on, Jake. He needs a little more persuasion. Hold it, Dolph. Pete, if your pa didn't send you that code, did he send you anything at all? Why, why, yeah. He sent me his Bible. His Bible? Yeah, I remember that Bible. He used to carry it around with him all the time. That's right. Where is it now? Have you still got it? Of course I have. It's back in the cabin. You fellas tie Pete up good and tight so he can't get away. We're going to the cabin and get that Bible. What do we want to do that for? It's a code we're after. I've got a hunch we'll find that code somewhere inside his pa's Bible. You mean his old man put the Old Joe Fraser was a mighty foxy critter. It'd be just like him to put the code someplace where no one would ever think of looking. Yeah. Maybe you're right at that. Maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong. What if Fraser is just leading us on a wild goose chase? In that case, we'll try using a little pressure on Mrs. Fraser. If Pete won't talk, maybe his wife will. We'll continue our story in just a moment. there, partner. What goes on here? Yeah, Pete! I'm a rootin' tootin' cowhand, that's what. Uh, so I see. You look like one, too, judging from that ten-gallon hat, chaps, boots, spurs, and all. But look, mister, just you put up those shooting irons of yours and calm down. Fell ought to know better than to go around waving a pair of six-shooters. Partner, you're right. Dead right. Say, these are just pea shooters. For real excitement, let me tell you about the kind of gun that gives me a bigger kick than a longhorn Texas steer. Oh? Mister, I'm talking about a gun that's got them all beat. Partner, that's the gun that shoots Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Oh, you're telling me. Yes, sir. Fellow with any zip and go to him needs to stow away a he-man breakfast. Now you're talking. And Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat fills the bill for you, huh? Oh, does it ever. Just pour on the old milk of cream... Add your favorite fruit. You know what? What? There's no beating this eating. That's what. <laughs> well, sir, fellas and girls, that's a mighty good tip. So tomorrow morning, be sure to get the drop on a really swell-tasting breakfast. Eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. Yes, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are shot from guns actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Bigger and better tasting. Important, too, wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you. Both delicious kinds furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Man, oh man, don't miss out another day. Say to Mom, from now on, I want to eat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. Young Pete Frazier had been captured from his cabin by two crooks. The crooks took him to a cave in the hills where he was confronted by Matt Jessup, an old friend of his father's. Jessup produced a secret code message written by Pete's father on his deathbed and demanded that Pete decipher it. Pete refused, saying that he did not possess the code and he maintained his stubborn silence in spite of a severe working over by the two strong-armed men, Jake and Dolph. Finally, the crooks abandoned their efforts to make him talk and headed back to his cabin, hoping to find the secret code in the Bible which Pete's father had sent him just before he died. Hey, what's the idea of circling back through the hills this way, Jessup? Yeah, why don't we go straight back to the cabin? Same way Jake and me went. No use taking any risks. If Fraser's wife went and got help, they may follow your trail to the cave. We might run smack into him. Yeah. 
I never thought of that. I told you we should have tied the dame up. Well, how did I know we'd have to go back to the cabin? Never mind arguing. There's not much chance you could get help this fast anyway. Hey, wait up a minute. Oh, 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 oh. What's the matter? Take a look uh, down there. What? A red coat. And it looks like that dog of his is trailing someone. Trailing us? I'll soon fix that. Put down that gun, you fool. We're not shooting any Mounties. But he'll find Fraser in the cave. Let him. By the time he unties Fraser and trails us back to the cabin, we'll have the Bible and be miles out of his reach. He's right, Jake. I sure don't want any part of killing a Mountie. All right. Come on. we better not lose any time. Get, get, up, get up, up there. there. Come on. Unaware that he had been seen, Sergeant Preston continued on the trail of Pete and his captors. A short time later, the sergeant arrived at the cave where Pete was being held prisoner. Hold on, Hold on, steady. Hold it, King. If they're in that cave, we may have a fight on our hands. Come on out. This is Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Come on in. I'm tired up. All right, if King trusts you, I guess I can, too. Sure came at the right time, Sergeant. From the looks of you, I should have gotten here a little sooner. They beat me up a little bit. Well, we'll soon have you free. And by the way, my name is Pete Fraser. I know. Your wife told me what happened. So I happened to trail you here. Where is my wife now, Sergeant? Back at the cabin, I guess. That's where I left her. There you go. You stand up all right? Sure, I, I'm all right. Good. Thanks. Sergeant, we've got to get back to the cabin as fast as we can. You mean the crooks are headed back there? Yeah. They've got a half an hour's head start on us. They'll have Karen at their mercy. Come on, then. We can ride double on my horse. You can tell me about it on the way. Meanwhile, the two crooks were already approaching the cabin where Kay and Fraser was waiting, alone and unarmed. About half a mile from the cabin, Matt Jessup reined up his horse and signaled the other two men to halt. Oh, 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 there. Oh. What are we stopping for, Jessup? One of us better wait right here, behind these boulders. What's the idea? We may find that Bible right away, and then again we may have to do some looking for it. I don't want to take any chances on us getting caught by surprise. You mean that Mountie may come back and find us? He might. He sure won't lose any time getting back here when Fraser tells him where we're headed. That's no lie. Dolph, you wait here and keep a lookout. If we see anything coming this way that looks like a red coat, fire off your gun. All right, but don't waste any time. I don't like the idea of that Mountie breathing down our necks. Don't worry. It'll take more than one red coat to queer our game. Come on, Jake. Get right. up there. Get up. Get up. A short time later, the two crooks reined up at the cabin. The dame's coming out. You come back. Yeah, I'm back. Got a new pal with me this time. Who are you? How about it, Jessup? Should we introduce ourselves? Never mind, Gabbing. Get inside, sister. Get your hands off me. I said get inside. I don't know what you're up to, but you won't get away with me. Shut up and listen. Your husband's dad had a Bible he always carried around with him. Before he died, he sent it to Pete. Where is it? What do you want to know for? We're asking the questions. You just answer them. Suppose I refuse. You better speak up. You're hurting my wrist. I'll hurt it a lot more if you don't answer my questions. Where's that Bible? It's over on the shelf. That's better. Now go over and get it. Hey, I guess this is it right here. Bring it here and let's have a look at it. Seem to be any coat stuck in here. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. You can see for yourself. Well, maybe if I turn it upside down and shake out the pages. <laughs> nope, nothing there. I told you there wasn't. Hey, I wonder if he could have sewed it into binding some way. Oh, wait a minute. I think I've got it. Now, what do you mean? Maybe those numbers on the code message are page numbers. Yeah, that's an idea. Get the message out and see what the numbers are. All right, I've got it right here. Yeah? What's the first number? Uh, let's see. 122. Well, I'll turn to that page. 20, 21, 22. Here it is. Jessup, you're right. There's a circle drawn around the word go. That must be the first word of the message. What's the next number? Let's see. The next number is four. Uh-huh. Here's page four. There's nothing on it. Uh, that's funny. What about page five? That's the next number. Uh, nothing on five either. You suppose we're on the wrong track? Wait, I've got an idea. You're looking at the Old Testament. The page numbers start all over again in the New Testament. Try that. Okay. There we are. And here's the New Testament. Now let's see, page four and five. 
Doggone, Jessup, you sure are smart. Let's see. Two words circled. East on page four and from on page five. And so far, we've got three words of the message. Go east from... What's the next number? Let's see. It's right it's a here. shot. It must be Dolph. He's seen that Mountie coming. we got to get out of here. Give us the book. You grab the girl. The girl? What do we want her for? If there's any gunplay, we can use her for a shield. <gasps> and if things get too hot, she may come in handy as a hostage. That's a good idea. Come here, sister. You keep away from me. I told you to come here. Let me alone. You better calm down, girlie, before I really get rough. Have you got her? Yeah, yeah, I've got her. Then Go come on. Me. All right, come on. Go. Uh, here comes Dolph now. <laughs> that Mountie's coming. He's got Pete Fraser with him on his horse. Let him come. We got the code. Jake, can you manage the girl on your horse? Yeah, sure I can. She don't weigh much. Come on, you. Get up there. All right, then. Let's get out of here. Steady, Steady boy. Easy, boy. Get up get there. Get up there. Get up there. The fugitives had gained a long head start by the time Sergeant Preston and Pete Fraser galloped up to the cabin ten minutes later. From the fact that no horses were tethered outside the cabin, the two men realized at a glance that they had arrived too late to intercept the crooks. Oh, there, hold Blackie. Looks like they've gone. Cabin door's open. Karen! Run inside and take a look. All right. Steady, fellow. Steady now. She's gone, Sergeant. They must have taken her with them. That means they'll try to use her as a hostage. Which way'd they go? Evidently, they headed down the creek trail. Come on, Sergeant. We've got to catch them. Wait a minute. That trail cuts around through the bench land farther down the creek, doesn't it? That's right. It circles back this way on the other side. And if I head straight up over the hill, I should be able to cut them off. You're right, Sergeant. That's pretty rough ground. Can you make it? I'll try. Hey, wait. You're going to take me with you, aren't you? It'll be easier for Blackie if there's just one of us. I know, but I can't stay here and do nothing with Karen in danger. Besides, you may need me if there's any gunplay. All right. Climb up, then. <laughs> Steady. Get up there. Come on, Blackie. <laughs> A short time later, as the sergeant's horse struggled over the crest of the hill, the sound of hoofbeats was heard. It must be them coming now. Yes. The way we're going, we'll never manage to cut them off. Oh, Blackie, who now? I'll get down, Sergeant. You go in alone. That won't help much. It's these trees and underbrush is holding us back. What are you going to do? King, down the hill, fella. Stop those horses. You can make it, boy. As the intelligent husky raced down the hill to carry out his master's orders... The three crooks and their captive came galloping into sight along the trail. Matt Jessup was already congratulating himself on the way they had outwitted their pursuer. I guess we got clean away from that Mountie. <laughs> we sure did. What's more, we've got the code to decipher the message. But you'll never get away with this. Sergeant Preston will track you down. Yeah, that's what you think. Hey, what's that? It's a wolf. He's going to attack us. It's no wolf. It's King. The Mountie's dog. One of us trailed us. Oh, oh, <laughs> Darting in and out among the three horses, King nipped savagely at their legs and flanks. His attack threw the horses into a panic. They reared and plunged wildly. Do something, Dolph. Shoot him before he upsets us. How can I shoot him? He's got my horse fucking do. You've got a gun, Jake. Use it. I've got enough to do for hanging onto the dame. King sought desperately to prolong the confusion until his master could arrive on the scene. Hey, shoot that dog. He centered his attack on the horse of the man who was holding Mrs. Fraser, hoping to unseat the rider and his prisoner. Maddened by the dog's worrying tactics, the horse bucked and whirled again and again. Hey, I can't hang on! As Jake and the girl fell to the ground, the crook named Dolph finally got a clear aim at the snarling husky. Never mind, I'll plug the critter right now. Uh, my arm! It's a mounty. He shot the gun right out of my hand. Don't try anything, any of you. I've got you covered. You haven't got me covered, Monty. This girl's right in your line of fire. You start shooting, she's going to get hurt. Very well. I'll holster my gun. Sergeant, be careful. They'll kill you. Get up, Blackie. Come on, now. Jessup's not armed and the other one's wounded. Who there, who? The man holding you is the only one with a gun. That's right. And I won't hesitate to use it. I advise you to drop that gun. Yeah. And I advise you not to come any closer. I'm warning you, Mountie. Take him, King. Get this dog off me. Now's our chance, Stop. Get up. Get up. Get up. Hold it, you two. All right, boy. One guard. Hit the ground, you two. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Sergeant Preston handcuffed Jake and Matt Jessup together and then held all three crooks covered until Pete Fraser made his way down the hill on foot. Afterward, the group returned to Pete's cabin. 
Karen Fraser explained how Matt and Jake had found the secret of the code message in the form of circled words in the Bible. With Pete standing by anxiously, she completed the job of deciphering which the crooks had begun. No wonder they were so anxious to get hold of the code. What does it say? Just listen to this. Go east from Whitehorse. On the seventh day, you shall come to the Valley of the Wolf. In this valley is a stream full of gold. Hmm. The Valley of the Wolf. Did you ever hear of such a place, Sergeant? I've heard of it, but I didn't know anyone had ever prospected over that way. The Valley of the Wolf is the Indian name for it. Jessup, how did you know that message from my dad told about a gold strike? I knew he'd found gold in his last prospecting trip, but he wouldn't tell me where he'd been. He probably knew better than to trust you before he'd filed his claim. Don't think you're so smart, Mounty. It's that dog of yours that kept us from getting away. <laughs> No doubt about that. Thanks to King, Pete here will get the gold, and you three will go to jail. <laughs> yes, boy? It's about time we herded these crooks back to Selkirk. When we get them safely behind bars, I'll call this case closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. As Mother knows, quality comes first in a food. That's why the famous breakfast cereals, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, are made from only the premium grains of wheat or rice. So to get the original crisp, fresh, wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue Quaker packages. The packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Get the one and only delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Yellow Ribbon. When King and I trailed and caught the man who had set fire to the lumber camp at Grand Point, we knew our night's work was only beginning. Young Ross Bartlett, determined to prove that he was no coward, was facing a fight for his life, and we had to reach Dawson in time to save him. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Attention, dog owners. Here's a real bargain. The famous Kennel Bar Dog Feeding Bowl compares in value to bowls up to $3.50. Now only $1 with four kennel ration labels. Kennel Bar is the new improved way to feed dogs. It's a heavy-gauge plastic bowl 15 inches long. Serves water and food separately. Easy to clean, and it won't tip over. Get your Kennel Bar Dog Feeding Bowl today. Send one dollar and four kennel ration labels to Kennel Ration, Chicago, 77. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long.